Thanks for staying with us. I'm Bill O'Reilly in the What the Heck Just Happened segment tonight. God, gay Bible characters, and pinheads. Let's get right to it. And here they are, Five Guy, Greg Gutfeld, and I'm this guy, Bernard McGurk. All right, Gutfeld. Now, there is a move by the atheistic community, all right, to take the words in God we trust out of the currency. you have any currency on you, Gutfeld? Yeah, I okay. think I have a, a 20. As a matter of fact, I have a $20 bill. Just $20 here. bill. Oh. Yes. And what, what does it say on there? Uh, okay. I have to put on my, my little red glasses. Oh, yeah. Yes. They're uh, very it, masculine. <laughs> yes. It was rolled up. Uh, where do you want me to look? What does it say in God we trust? Uh, I don't see it. It's on the back. <laughs> oh, what's this house? Yeah, okay. That's the White House. You know, I don't deal with 20s. Uh, right. I'm not like you. All right. All right uh, in God we trust. There it is. Okay. Now, do you object to that, Gutfeld? Because you're a heathen. Yes, I think it's too judgmental. It is. It's too judgmental. We need something nicer, like don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> right. That would be nice. <laughs> or 40% goes to Obama. Well, if they, if they do, I like the uh, political slogan, but you couldn't do that because it might change. Yes. But I just think if Will they take <laughs> McGurk in God we trust off the currency, they just should have high and a happy face. Yes. That's all. That's so no one would be offended. Everyone would, you know. It's like, but the rationale behind this is that in God We Trust is, number one, offensive to atheists, all right? Right. Because they don't trust in God. And the two, it's exclusionary because there are some people who believe in many gods, like Zeus and Apollo and all of those. So the, all the Zeus people yep. are offended by that. Uh, well, it's total idiocy, stupidity. It's, it's, it's less a religious thing than a, a cultural thing. Throughout the ages, the cultural elders have saw the need to, to convey the idea that there's a higher power because most people are stupid, selfish SOBs who need to, uh, to have that notion that there is somebody up there looking at you and, and watching you. That, right, that and a don't spend your money on narcotics because, yes. you know, I mean, you look at that, might stop that. There's a Probably practical not. value to it, right. and the same thing with religious prayer, and you're still free not to believe if you don't want, but we'll start from the premise that there is something up there Love looking it. over you. I, I am a simple man, as everybody knows, and you guys yeah. concur, right? Yes. We're all in agreement that oh, I'm simple? Absolutely. So here's what I say to the atheists. If you don't like in God we trust, don't take the money. Don't take it. Right. Trade. Barter. Beats. All right? <laughs> yeah, whatever. All right, now, in Massachusetts, uh, um, we have a situation, McGurk, yep. where there's a high school in South Hadley. You've been to South Hadley, Mass? Uh, yes. That's in that little Pesimitra. belt where Smith College is, a lot of the liberal universities, Amherst, they're going to, South Hadley. So they're going to put on a biblical show, a play. Which is good, right? The Bible doing good ratings wow, on the campus. we're bringing religion back to the uh, public. Not exactly. What? All the biblical characters are being portrayed as gay. Wait a minute. No, it's true. <laughs> Come on. No. Well, aren't all plays uh, sort of gay-friendly to begin with? Well, there was a scene in a Mel Brooks movie, Keep It Gay. Remember that? A little song in <laughs> <and> the producers. <laughs> Very funny, but... We're not making any judgments. But now this is, are you offended by the high school play? All the characters in the biblical times are gay. Listen, nobody's for censorship, but if they're going to use tax, they don't even let uh, nativity scenes, Christmas trees during Christmas. But all of a sudden now, yes, they're going to put in the, but, uh, there's going to be a religious theme. But it, and we're not for censorship, but they're using public money to for, uh, push an agenda on yeah, people, on kids. A tolerance again. But here's my question, uh, Godfellow, and I yes. think you can answer this. You're Please one man who can. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have a gay Adam and Eve, how do you procreate? There's no, the, the race dies out be, in the Garden of Eden, does be, it not? Be fruitful it's and done. We're done. Fruitful and multiply. That's the quote you in the Bible. You can't multiply exactly. if Adam and Eve are both gay. Well, uh, this, this kind of uh, event is designed to upset people that they want to upset, to turn you into an uptight conservative. My response to stuff like this is, who cares? Grow up. Do the Koran, you wimps. Do this with the Koran, then we'll talk. So you but, want the yeah. South Hadley High School officials Oh, yeah, to mock the Koran. Yeah, no, because they won't, because they're wimps. <laughs> right. That's no, the they point. Won't. No, they, they won't. won't. No, Believe me, they the won't. The fundamental no, hypocrisy right. is that, that Christians are generally nice people who will not react. Well, there's, so Jew, there's a Jewish them. component to the Bible as right. well. Yes, that's so, true. So they're basically taking the Judeo-Christian tradition, which is what the Bible is all about, and I don't know if they're mocking it. They want tolerance. Do I think Scientology. Well, do, do Dianetics. I would see a gay Dianetics. They're revising history. Dianetics. As a matter of fact, the city of Sodom doesn't get destroyed. It gets refurbished. The dance halls are getting new lights, and the, the, the bathhouses are all uh, scrubbed it's down. Fine. 
It's all good. It's, so Sodom, Sodom stays. Sodom doesn't, doesn't get destroyed. <laughs> Sodom no, stays. It's, it's the apostles look like the village vi people. Very astute. By the way, how can you not like Guyanetics? Did you just hear what he said? Yes, I did. The apostles look like the village people. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Can you just see the Last Supper? Macho, macho, man. Yes. I, you know, no, I can't see that. was Jesus, badly offensive. <laughs> Jesus dancing on water? It's going to be great. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have more of the boys, and I always apologize because I have to for this segment. I will introduce a brand new feature, the biggest pinheads of the week. Right back with that. Back in the book segment tonight, a brand new Friday feature called the biggest pinheads of the week. Once again, Bernard McGurk and Greg Gutfeld. So, if you're just going to pick a pinhead every week, and you start, McGurk, with Dennis Rodman. So who was your favorite pope and why? My favorite pope, I think, uh, Paul, Dan Paul. You know, the second, I think he was cool as hell. I mean, he, had, he put him as, was like a pimp. Sitting up there, he was like a pimp up there, sitting up there, you know, and he's, he's speaking like 20,000 different languages, and people are just sitting there just throwing their lives to him. I have no idea what that what that was all about. Did you translate? Do you know what he was saying? Well, yeah, he, he called uh, one of the most vaunted uh, popes in recent history a pimp. Right. Which, no, uh, he was like a, but then he said he, he talked 20,000 languages. Right, exactly. Right. Well, he made no sense. I mean, his <laughs> IQ matches his rebound average when he played in the NBA. He's no genius, uh, Dennis Rodman. But uh, and, and, and now it comes out today that uh, we're building missile shields in California after he went to North Korea. So John Kerry is nothing to worry about. But isn't about. that too easy? Isn't Rodman too easy to make a pen? Yes, you're right. He's, right. he's no... He, so he's, he's starting uh, off easy. He's, he's pretty harmless. And right. I'm not advocating that the Swiss guards, you know, take him to St. Peter's Square and Rodney King him or anything like that. Not at all. Of course not. <laughs> he's, he, he's, he's, he's a harmless dummy. Yeah, but, but he he's should, a he dummy. wouldn't say that mm. about Abraham Lincoln or Nelson Mandela. Oh, yeah, he probably Bella. would. If he thought he can get some publicity, it's he probably would. It's a would. compliment. Remember. All right, Gutfeld, your pinhead of the week is... This one's easy one too it's the uh, mayor of new york uh bloomberg all right uh, wait yes we have some tape yay will it for the first time in the history of the world more people will die from overeating than undereating this is year i think that it is incumbent on government to tell people what they're doing to themselves and let people make their own decisions so our job is to educate people mm -hmm. as long as you don't ban cheez it's Cheez Its are okay. <laughs> That's my addiction. What I don't get, Gutfeld, is, uh, from the mayor is uh, we just want to tell people, but he's banning the big soft drinks and, and everything else. So he's doing a little bit more than telling people. When you say that you're starting a national conversation, that means you lost. Because they, they rejected, the, they overthrew the soda ban, so that was his way of saying, well, I really don't care. At least we got the conversation started. Shut up with your conversation. I'm tired of national conversations. By the way, where did he get this stat that more people are dying from overeating? No, I was going to ask you. Is that, that, I mean, is that a legitimate from the, stat? The, from the Bloomberg Institute of pulling things out of my butt. Is that where it is? That's <laughs> where it's from. Okay. Now, he it's, didn't you know, it's, that. it's actually insulting. <laughs> to a lot of people that deal with hunger issues around the world for him to say that. But I don't know if that's so far-fetched, though. No, okay, you had a heart disease. 69% of the American public overweight now. They're not dead. No, Our average yet. lifespan, in, in, we have one of the highest lifespans in the world. Yeah, around 80 and, years And what old, they're doing right. is they're factoring heart disease, they're factoring cancer. They're not factoring in starvation, against starvation. And that's an interesting thing. Do we really want to live much more than 80 years? I mean, do you really want... You know, if the big soda is going to bring you in around 80, 81, you can still have it. I'll sign up for uh, 90, 95 right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah think, uh, you're looking you know, 80. They got, <laughs> oh, that's they got, nice. these, got, they got these great pharmaceuticals these days that, uh, you know, make things a little more interesting. All right. Yes. Uh, I think I know what you're talking about, but I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> All right. My pin out of the week is the editor of the Denver Post, a man named Gregory Moore. I think we have a picture of Mr. Moore. We're going to throw him up there. Now, Moore does not have any control of... The editorial page, which, you know, we destroyed this week. You guys have been following that yeah. story. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're against Jessica's Law because they're in bed with the Democratic Party out there. They actually use the editorial columnist, use the same words as the fundraiser for the Democratic Party. Very similar. But this guy Moore, he should know better, and he should control his paper. This guy's a former editor of the Boston Globe, co-chair of the Pulitzer Prize Committee, and he's turned the Denver Post into basically a house organ for the Democratic Party. And who's suffering? The kids in Colorado, because they can't get Jessica's laws. We heard earlier, not only did they lie about it, they being the politicians and the columnists at the uh, 
Denver Post. And maybe we'll just say oh, it isn't a lie. They were mistaken by saying no law enforcement behind it. And we bring in two powerful law of import, uh, Colorado law enforcement. So, well, you know, it, it's just opposite. So the guy's name is Gregory Moore. He is my pinhead of the week. You guys dissent, concur. Uh, no. Totally concur. Absolutely. Yeah. Disgraceful that they wouldn't protect the, the most defenseless among us. Or at least report on it honestly. Right. Just report honestly. If you're against it, say why you're against Jessica's law. Just don't get in bed with the Democratic Party and pretty much toe their line no matter what they do. But this do. is a natural outgrowth of the leafy campus. They are always going to be more pro-criminal than pro-victim. <clears throat> well, there's a lot of bad stuff happening in Colorado, and I used to live there. It's a beautiful place to live. It's changed dramatically and not for the better. There they are. Gutfeld McGurk, everybody.